six times where I live, you know. <laughs> I think you played here like so many times. So yeah, 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 yeah. No, Maribu Marib is great. I mean I, I love that place and David yeah. is amazing. <laughs> yeah. We've been friends for 25 years. So I think we <laughs> started oh, he... playing playing here way back okay. in the two thousand early two thousands, I think, like in Jazz Club Sachmo. One of the first yeah, yeah. hits right. with the thing. Right. It was like yeah. Incredible. I, I mean, it's a great, it's a great place, important place too. And yeah. I'm, I'm happy I don't live so far away, actually. So that, that's good. True. I didn't know that. I was like, man, you're in Austria. <laughs> Why don't we play? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's not no. so far. Yeah, yeah, it's really close. But uh, I will just jump in. Like, I, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, you did the fire orchestra now in Italy thing, but uh, I watched like uh, you did a solo performance in San Cariodom in May this year, and uh, yeah. Yeah. in Ljubljana and it's you know the video the light everything is incredible and the sound and I just wanted to ask you how do you what's your relation to solo playing I mean for me solo it's like really intimate and amazing how do you approach a solo sax saxophones concert yeah I mean it's a <laughs> it can be a long answer but no I mean oh, yeah, it's, so... a, it's a different kind of thing I mean solo Playing is, of course, I mean, you don't communicate with other people, so there's no, like, real interaction. So, I mean, uh, in a way, it's, it, it's, it's more about intuitive composing hmm. somehow, I guess. But, uh, um, I mean, I love doing it because of the, ch because of the challenge, basically. Yeah. Uh, two seconds. Boom. Uh, because it is, I love hearing solo music mm. and I love watching solo music because it really tells me something and it's uh, interesting to see what one mind <laughs> can come up with you know uh, with form and structure and details yeah. and everything and uh, it's difficult it's really difficult I, th I think for me it's uh, it, yeah it's sometimes it's difficult to listen to also <laughs> you know uh, but I it needs to be a challenge involved. And I, I learned something I learned doing a lot of solo improvising is that if you have a, a, a plan, if you have a stage, if you have a roadmap or something, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, it, it, it limits you and it limits the flow, it limits the energy. So uh, the best decision is always to start from zero. And of course, no one can really start from zero. Uh, we are human beings, but uh, uh, I I never have a plan beforehand no. how to oh, do it, okay. how where to go, and what to use. I mean, the the solo concerts I did recently with Ljubljana and Skopje, and also in Czechish in in uh, Hungary. Mm -hmm. I actually had for the first in a long time. I had. Uh, a small roadmap, which yeah, was, it's like a storyline, a little, yeah. I saw, yeah. Yeah, but it, the, 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 it was extremely easy. So <laughs> it was like going from the small horns to the big ones, basically. So that that's it. But yeah. with musical details and uh, content, nothing for me, nothing should be decided, and uh, I should just go and then the actual room. Mm. Light, scenography, acoustic, everything is a very big part of where the music will take me. Yeah. So th there could be certain acoustic phenomena in, in the room that really makes me play in a special way. And there could also be sounds, undefinable sounds coming from the room that also affect me to go in a certain way. So I try to stay really open uh, to what I hear and also to what yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's... Uh, I, mean, I love doing it, but I I wouldn't like to be on tour constantly with solo work. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. This music, I mean, 
the last week in Italy really proved this. I mean, music is about sharing, you know, and music about is about communication and to be interactive. Yep. Uh, and that you can translate it in, into life as well, uh, yeah. of course. Uh, that's, Especially that's improvised music, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's I mean, that's yeah. what makes it so interesting. But uh, yeah. the, the solo situation is so fundamentally different. So, and that's what makes it interesting yeah. to try to make something. Uh, yeah. And I'm I'm not ready yet. There's a lot to <laughs> explore. Yeah. yeah, it's like the uh, first time I heard like this is one of Steve Lacey's Steve Lacey's solo saxophone, and it's just like you know, or Dave Liebman of those even more jazzy guys. Like it's incredible, you know, to hold tension for one hour. Or you know, that's it's not easy. I mean, and, it's and so heavy, you, man. When you hear someone who is playing and and losing focus or can't keep the the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Alive, it it gets very, it hurts <laughs> to to listen to, and uh, usually shorter solo sets are to prefer, you know, yeah. in a way. Yeah. But there are, then on the other hand, there are musicians like Cecil Taylor who could make solo concerts for three hours, and you would not exactly think about the time. So it's uh, it's a challenge, but I mean, it's it's also very interesting. Uh, you know, I'm a discoholic. Yeah, and a freak about recordings, but it there's a very serious side to the collecting, which I mean, you can see all this shit. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Someday I get rid of everything, but uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's an amazing journey you can take to explore the history, yeah. to see what has been done. Because uh, if you look at jazz and impress music, there, there's like I have a feeling if you look at the Academies and conservatories, they have no fucking idea. I agree. I mean, they, yeah. they, have, they have a small idea about the history, but if you if you dive deeper into it, you find stuff that no one is talking about, you know? Yeah, I agree. And this is just with existing records, with, with violence. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Of course, the hidden treasures of, of tape recordings and stuff in archives or, or hidden away, blah, blah, blah. The, the, and for me, I, I can't get enough of, of exploring. And yeah. I always get very sad when, when I uh, talk or watching the younger generation who thinks that internet is the only solution, that, that you can click and you can find and you can understand. And it's completely not that way. I mean, it, to understand something, internet can be a good help to find certain informations, but to really understand something, you have to go deeper and yeah. then you have to spend time. And this is the problem with the one click truth that a lot of us are living in. You need time yeah. to listen to shit. You need to think about it. You need to explore and go further to, to understand what yeah. is really in there. So, so internet and Google or whatever can help you get the names basically, but not not even that to a full extent. The, I mean, the, the best sources are always my, my colleagues. Sure, you know, yeah. Musician colleagues or collecting colleagues. And if, if we talk about solo music, there's a lot of stuff to find. I mean, for instance, I don't think many people know that one of the first uh, published solo recordings is Herbie Mann. Oh, really? He did, what, really? I didn't know that. Wow. It's fucking really? crazy. It's oh, like man. Solo flute recording on Savoy, Seriously. I think it's from 57 or 58. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's called like Man Alone. Okay, I'll check it out. Wow, I don't know this and, one. I mean, Herbie Man, he made some really cool stuff early and he made some <laughs> listenable. <laughs> <stuff. laughs> <laughs> you know, he had Sonny Sherrock in his band. Yeah, that's that's that was incredible, yeah. Fantastic. And he did... He was producing some really great records. And then, I mean, his own music is not my cup of tea, you know, but he's a, great, he's a really great flute player, but yeah. the music, I don't care so much. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it's taste. But, yeah. but this early, rec the really early recordings, the more jazz recordings, and especially the solo record, is fantastic. And he really keeps the, the fire. He keeps yeah. the attention and everything. It's great. And no one knows this record. And it's a Savoy record. And it's, it's like a commercial jazz mm, record. Wow. But I'm because. I'm sure it didn't sell shit. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those yeah. really crazy records that you can find cheap. 
because yeah. no one is looking for it. So sure. just just go online and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I'm a I'm a geek, you know. I'm like you. I'm like I'm reading all the time, and I'm you know connections and the albums and searching, and I'm you know I'm more with CDs, not out vinyl, but. You know, yeah. I, I read the, this, you know, Penguin Guide to Jazz and Jazz Recordings all the time. I'm like, oh, man, you know, I don't know. Joe McPhee played with this guy. You know, Fred Anderson did this with you exactly. or whatever, you know. But you need the love for to do that, which, yeah. like you no, said, it takes time and, you know. And you need, I mean, I I love records, obviously. And uh, I, I find so much information, I mean, also on the... On the record sleeves with in liner notes and stuff. Yeah, uh, that's and you know, and you get associations to go to do the research to the left or to the right or down or whatever. But I mean, in a way, theoretically, you should be able to find all this information online, but it, it's not happening. And 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 it's uh, the key is time because the one click thing. And love, yeah, interesting. You lose, you lose, you lose the direction. You lose the content. And if you sit and read in a book, your brain or is with you in a in a, in a totally different way. And I, I I love this the tactility, you know, of books yeah. and records. Oh, yeah. It's a different. Yeah. It's a different thing. And you can sit with them for a, a listen, and you can read for a longer time, and then you go somewhere else and with the experience you had of this record or this book and it's it's important and i think if you yeah. translate it to modern society and the the life you're living this completely fucked up social media yeah, time we're living it i i say completely fucked up because, and i really mean it i mean i'm i'm on facebook because i post when there's a gig related uh, it's a i'm the same or, i'm the same i don't scroll i'm, I'm like <laughs> Fuck it, man! But but yeah. it, it's uh, it's a it's a great it's a great it's a great uh, not great it's a good tool yeah. to spread the information. But yeah. this whole stupid interaction and the worst is really for me the the liking thing because there's there's so many. I mean, with 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 this gen, we call it if you're in between twenty or thirty or something. For me, this is the social media generation. And there's so many problems with like suicide and depressions mm. and blah, 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 yeah. because of social media. And this is, it's so fucking upsetting. It's like, I have no words for it. And, and it's dangerous because you don't think what you're doing yeah. and you're liking or you're disliking or you do this and you comment and blah, blah, blah. We are all humans. And I, I think it's a very, it's dangerous, man. I, you know, it's like, I'm happy I have a 14 year old daughter who, in theory, I would think, ah, oh, maybe she will be interested and she will have an account and blah. But she's completely her and her friends. They're completely. That's good. Yeah. They're, not, they're not even interested. They want to hang. They want to bake together. They want to go out in the forest and they just want to meet and hang. You know. It's rare. They, yeah. You know, and I, hopefully, you know how generations works. I mean, hopefully, this uh, there will be more people that think this is really not a necessary thing to be a you know yeah. a human <laughs> yeah I, I agree i agree totally but it's, it's I, like being a romantic almost you know i I, yeah. I, I i'm obsessed with books also i still read you know books in bed my girlfriend has you know the uh, the reader yeah and and she's like well take you know a reader is easier and i'm like no you know i love the smell of a book i love the that it gets you know wrinkled and it, you, it's the tactility i mean it's yeah, uh, of yeah. course of course, every medium has its advantages. Yeah, and, sure. and you get the content from a reader, you get the content from a MP3 file, even yeah. if it sounds crappy, but uh, th there is an act, there's yeah. a mental preparation inside of yourself. If I decide now to go and pick, after we talk now, I got an idea, I have to listen to this solo thing, blah, blah, blah. And I, I go there, I pick it out, I yeah. look at it, I can smell it. I can feel it. Yeah. And I choose to put it on the turntable. I choose to put, sit down. I choose to take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or the whole day and listen to this yeah. music. I make choices. And when you, you take sit time online, to do it, yeah. yeah. And when you sit online and you click, you're not really making choices. You're just fucking clicking, you know. You know, and I'm there. And we're all there. We all do this. You know, we go on YouTube and you check something yeah. interesting. It could be sport or it could be music or whatever and you just 
hardly finish what you're watching. You know, you just click, click, click and don't think. And this thing, these mechanisms of taking us away from thinking is, you can have a lot of conspiracy theories around all this stuff, of course. And some people do that and take it up in space, you know. It's, uh, but, I mean, the main thing, we have to be more critical, you know. Yeah. It's to whatever medium we use or whatever we wherever we go and you know uh, and for me it's it's, uh, it's completely enough you know to have an archive with records and books and and i know there's a lot of stuff in my collection i haven't checked out oh well, sure sure shit notes and i mean i will not even have time to sh- check everything out it's it's enough for me there's so much inspiration and yeah. information for my own music i mean that's the ma- that's the main reason why i have it yeah. I, love, I love the act of looking for certain records or books and I love finding them and then using them. It's, it's, a, it's a great chain of events, but the main, main thing is the information I get yeah. and how I, how I can tra- transform it into my own music and develop as a musician and also as a person. person. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah like, uh, how, how do we, you know, I still remember when I was a teenager, like, you know, I was buying CDs and this was like still maybe in Yugoslavia or early t- days of Slovenia, you know, and we, I didn't have a lot of money. So what I said up, you know, I went to the store, found maybe one CD. I don't know. And, you know, then it was like a process of, like you said, opening a booklet. It was like a whole romantic procedure. And yeah. what do you think is the solution in a way, in your eyes? How do we, because nowadays when I talk to my students, let's say, or younger generations, their attention span of listening to the whole album or having this, attitude to the whole storyline of an album it's basically gone in the majority how do you think this can be brought back or if with with us making interviews like this and and yeah, right, yeah. yeah. but but i mean it it's uh, every time has its uh, mechanisms and its qualities yeah. and everything. but what i what i call the one click thing is uh, it, it's it's really rude towards the musicians and composers yeah. and the producers and whatever. When you make an album, you know you you have an idea of how an album starts, and it's it's a journey. You know, it's an A side and B side or a CD of an hour or something. But it's it's a, you make a journey, and it's very thoroughly constructed and thought of, you know, how to maneuver and also like the, the pauses between the pieces has a meaning, in some cases, a huge meaning, you know, and uh, we, just, we just have to show and, and explain <laughs> in any way we can that the, the, the experience you can have from listening to a whole album uh, is a completely different thing than just realizing, ah, Yep. This is uh, A playing with B playing with C at this place at a certain time, and then you continue to play. But to, we have to give people <laughs> the tools of listening. Maybe in a more in a, in a I mean for me, the, the starting points were more like emotionally emotional yeah. listening. You know, to uh, for me in my case like uh, late Coltrane, Eiler. Bratzmann, and so more like free jazz and, and European <laughs> free price music. And I, it, it was like, it was hurting in my stomach when I was listening. It was like, I was almost like shaking. The emotional and spiritual content was so strong. I couldn't, and I was so affected by this. And I knew, I knew I was, I was not more than maybe 13 or something. I heard uh-huh. some, yeah, really early. And I already had been playing like, uh, post electric miles Mahavishnu orchestra king crimson music already for a couple of years it, we mm. were really early i don't know why i mean we had a great music teacher so that that's one of the reasons why we were pushed into creating music from the start but to to listen of of for the emotional and spiritual content for me which has to do with uh, yeah feelings emotions but but uh, energy that, that was for me the starting point and that's also where I still at you know I, I love listening to music that 
maybe doesn't have so much energy in it, but then it's more an inner energy we're talking about. But we have to get people to understand that this can really enlighten your life. It can change your life. Yeah, definitely. That's a dangerous thing in a way, maybe for many people, but it can enrich in your life to a level no one even understands, you know, and, and it's, of course, you have, you have the political connections too, you know, why we do this uh, in this yeah. mainstream media world we're living in and with very short term yeah. goals for more commercial purposes and blah, blah, blah. We need to really f- fight this shit, you know, and make people understand they can get so much more out of any culture. I mean, we talk about music, but like, man, go into the books, go into the poetry, I mean, yeah. theater, like all. Culture, which, basically, I mean, yeah. Culture, basically, you know, which is yeah. far away from what you watch on TV, you know. TV is yeah. like, the, it's a perfect example how TV developed from something that was actually, they call it public service, like in Scandinavia, with, with, and the ambitions in the beginning, of course, was to educate people. Yeah. Shitloads of documentaries, interview programs, music programs, theaters, opera, like blah, 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 all this stuff. It was happening, you know. There was like one state channel. And then all this mainstream media popping in, and now it's lost. It's, it's all about commercials, all about yeah. selling. All about, there's nothing about enlightening the human beings or anything. It's really dangerous because it's very easy i see this with friends i see it with friends of my children i mean yeah. you see i mean this is not a new thing this is old but like yeah, the, the, like a mind pollution kind of thing yes um, I mean, yeah. the whole so- zombie yeah <laughs> zombie generations it's not just one generation it's many generations already and i think creative music creative culture is more important than ever and uh, if i lose this uh feeling uh i i stop playing i do something else uh so yeah. for me it's not just the music it's really on a different level i mean and, and it's a political decision to to make this music to go up against all this mainstream shit we are surrounded by i mean if you if you learn how to think critically you can deal with mainstream shit too you know you can sit yeah. and you you can watch this stupid like uh uh, dance, dance. They, they call it in Austria. They have uh, dancing stars. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of. I, I know the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, famous people dancing to each other, and it's like a competition, and it, it's uh, music and blah 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 blah. And it's it's bullshit. But if you can think critically, you can you can watch it. I can watch it with my kids. I can enjoy it. Sure. I can sit there for sure. couple hours and, and comment on the dresses and comment on the dance. And it's and it's fine. It's a social situation at home. With my family, you know, and we talk. We just, you know, it, and it's fine. But you have to, you have to understand what you are watching. Yeah, sure. And why you're watching it. So it, it's all about, it's all about that, you know. And then, you know, I can go down and I can listen to some really fucked up Swedish sound art or whatever, you know. When nothing is happening, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, that's. I mean, we. I have three daughters, and and uh, that's the only thing that's. In a way, I mean, there's many important things when you have children, of course, but the main thing is to, to, to teach them to think critically yeah. and to question things in, in life and in every day. I mean, and, and yeah, I mean, ask questions and be critical and they will, they will be fine. That's important. Yeah, that's really important. Make your own opinion. And, yeah. and that, that, that's something that, that's, that I value so much about your playing also and your sound. You kind of achieve this, you know. I hear like you play, I don't know, ten seconds, and I'm like, oh, that's Mats Gustafsson. <laughs> you know, if I listen to a record, then uh, how was your story there? I mean, like you know, you mentioned uh, Albert Taylor, or of course Peter Bertzman there, like and uh, Machine Gun, I guess, and all these records, uh, Coltrane, late Coltrane, or how did you like gel your sound through the years how do you see your development like from the early 70s to i mean late 70s to this is a key this is a key question and this is extremely important and for me this is uh, uh, one of the biggest keys 
maybe the biggest to towards becoming a musician is uh, to create your own language. Yeah. It, there's, there's no way around it. And it makes me very happy when you say that you can recognize my shit, you know, if you hear it. And uh, yeah. because that, that, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's the key. I mean, I'm, that, that's why, why would you like to make music where you sound like anyone oh, else? You know? Sure. And, and this, this is, if you look historically at like a, a jazz music and, and bebop and stuff, we, we were a group of friends, very deep friends. The, the main guy, Harold, passed away two years ago. And we, we met, he, he was running a bookshop that turned into a record shop, of course, uh, after a while. And we met every week for years, every fucking, before my whatever career or whatever you want to call yeah. it started. We met every week listening to, to music and we had this, he liked playing games. So he, we created this blindfold game. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. And we were like, it was the three of us, Edward, me and Harold. And then we had different guests coming in and out every week, blah, blah, blah. But it was the three of us all the years. And we, we developed all these rules, stupid rules. And sh but the main thing, it was to play records for each other, yeah, you know. And then you have to guess who is playing, but more important, you have to talk about the music. Mm. It, oh, started, yeah. it started as only guessing, and it started as just stupid, like Jackie Bayard playing alto sax, impossible to guess, you know, or you know, stuff like that. But uh, the, it really is quickly turned into a d discussion forum. You hear mm. a, a track and then we had this, you go around in a circle and one, you can talk until you finish and you, you, you actually rate the music. There was kind of a strange feeling somehow, you know, <laughs> to put a, a value from yeah. zero to five, you know? Uh, so that's one thing, but you have, to, you, have to, you have to say something about the music. Why do you like it or why do you hate it? Why can't you stand it? And you have to, to argue for it. You have to learn how to argue. And this was extremely difficult in the beginning. And then it, it was so much, I learned so much from this. Like, why do I like this? Or why do I, don't I like it? And why does he like it? Or why does she like it? So uh, it became really important for me and for all of us to, to be part of those sessions, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, something... Of course, uh, Harold, uh, this guy, uh, he was born early 40s and he taught me everything I know about New Orleans swing, bebop, hard bop, cool. I mean, I taught him some about free jazz and mm -hmm. stuff, so we had a nice sharing. But he could spot any, like trumpet, saxophone, and pianist from the whole tradition. Oh. He could say, ah, oh, this, uh, this is Lee Morgan. Uh, ni March 1962 or something. It, it was on a bizarre level. No, crazy shit. Wow. And I was like, how can you hear that? No, oh, it's easy. You hear how it starts the phrase, you know, and how the phrase goes in a certain way. And you hear the color of his tone in the early years or more this than yeah. it was in later years. And I was like, what? So I, I learned how to listen for this. And this, this was, I didn't know then, but this was really a key for me to develop my, my language and try to find a way. And the very important moment is when you realize that all the, all the music that's out there, all, all the music that's been done, you can pick anything from it. Yeah. You can pick certain things from Coltrane or Eile, Brutzmann, Evan Parker, Steve Lacey, I can pick details and I have, the thing is, it's a lot of work because there, there's certain, there's certain, uh, for instance, uh, staccato things that Lazy is doing yeah. with, with his time that is amazing. And I, I have to learn them. I have to control them. There's certain circular breathing techniques that Evan Park is doing all the time. Yeah. That's like, what the fuck is he doing? Like three or four layers, you know? Of course, you can ask him, which I did, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Find out. But you have to master these techniques, not to sound like Evan Parker or Steve Lacey, 
but to understand the techniques. And then you combine all your inspirations and all the informations into my own playing. And then yeah. I put it together. So I would say we could sit and listen to a solo of mine. I hate the situation, but anyway, and I can analyze, analyze afterwards and saying, oh, this I think comes from my inspiration of blah, blah, blah. blah. But yeah. I, that's not what I do when I play. When I play, it's intuitive. But sure, I it's whole, all, yeah, it's a bread metal. Okay. Right? Yeah. My, whole, my whole, when I have like master students, uh, I always talk about this and I, I talk about we all, we all, we are carrying a rucksack with us, the backpack. Yeah. yeah. And we put all the experience, all the techniques, all the knowledge, we put everything in it, you know. Uh, and then when you're in a, in a playing situation, you want to you reach for everything that's in the backpack. And the only way to reach it is te with technique. Mm. If you have really good technique, you can reach the, you know, you yeah. can reach all the information really fast. If your technique is not so good or the backpack is empty-ish, you can only make music for yeah. a period of time and then it will get uninteresting because you don't have anything to say, you know. But if you have really good technique, extended technique, basic technique, extended technique, yeah. you can reach everything in this backpack really quick in an almost in an immediate situation, like zero seconds. Uh, and that's the key. And then you, you find certain colors, techniques, sounds, that yeah. interest me more than others. And for me, this is a very long discussion in a way, but I mean, for me, it's... No, uh, please. it's <laughs> for, for me, it's been a lot like doing deeper research in ethnic music and uh, uh, a lot mm. of Asian percussion music, a lot of African oh, really? oh, wow. music, and finding elements in it that has to do with both phrasing, but also like uh, how you attack, how you produce a single tone, a single stroke, a hit. Yeah. Uh, and I, I got extremely interested in, in Japanese and Korean percussion music, for instance. Uh, and I, I couldn't understand how, I couldn't understand the meter. I couldn't understand where the beat was placed. And why. I just loved what I heard, but I couldn't understand. I was trying to read and it, but at the end, I was just trying to find a way to copy what I liked, you know. And yeah. uh, that, that's part of why I I tend to use a lot of percussive techniques uh, with, with, with my sax playing, and especially in the, in the solo situation, yeah. uh, because then they don't get lost. When you play with someone or a larger group, these kind of small sounds get lost because because they are small. You know, uh, so either you play with someone who understands all this and and deal with the dynamics, but or you play solo. Uh, so I mean, for me, I I, I would say. In the beginning, I was inspired, usually inspired by the saxophone players we mentioned yeah. earlier. The longer time went, I, I have to say, I got more inspiration from listening to ethnic music or hardcore <laughs> not music, you know, the, the energy, and, but also yeah. the flow, the density, and, and uh, then listening to free jazz, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. And I can say for sure, I, I, I got more inspired by listening to Warren Marsh, Lee Kunitz, Helmut Cusick than listening to contemporary colleagues of mine. I mean, there, there's sax players or other instrumentalists that are making amazing stuff yeah. that I try to make my version of, like uh, the way Paul Owens is, is playing the mm -hmm. drums. Yeah, for instance, yeah. Or it's a really great American piano player that I love, Greg Goodman, mm -hmm. who not many people know about. No. Fucking genius. It's like... It's like... A, uh, it's like... A, you take Evan Parker and Derek Bailey, put them together and, and make them play piano. Ooh, okay, I have to check them out. Okay, oh, okay. Mind-blowing. And shit like this, and then you try to make something up, but but I would say I, yeah, I, I mean I'm not I'm not checking I'm checking out, but I'm not getting so much stuff from other saxophone players. I I I, pre I prefer to go in, in different interesting yeah. directions, but it, it changed, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Focus changed, but 
what I, what I want to say is like there's so much. I mean, there's so much shit in 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 the history that we can be inspired by, and but it means doing research, and this is for me extremely in, in, important. Uh, it's not the one click or two or three clicks. It's sure. like it, it's like real research and real research. You need time, and this yeah. is a problem with the modern yeah. society. We don't have the time. We we made we put ourselves in a corner where there's so many people want so much from us all the time, and we have so many obligations and stuff we have to do. So we don't have time to sit down two hours. And I, I mean, I see that like with. You have a family, and you you need to do shit lots of things sure. to make your children happy, or make them manage to to uh, deal with their schools and blah, blah blah. But there's so much other stuff. I mean, families that's amazing, and that's what you do. But it's it's all the other stuff we have yeah. to work. And also yeah. as, a, as a musician, all the stupid paperwork and oh yeah, sure, and, yeah. <laughs> it's great. I can apply for a certain money for certain projects from time to time uh, but it takes enormous energy away and it takes a lot of time away and yeah. sometimes when i sit and you try we try to find funds for fire or fire orchestra which is extremely expensive sure. if you travel around with 15 or 20 people you need to spend time and do this but it it's time that you take away from your own playing or from your family or you know like so it's a uh, there's too much other shit going on. I mean, I would just like to play my music and be yeah. with my family. End of story. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to, to find the time. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's too much. And and on other, on the other hand, it's it's the only way to really on a deeper level understand music or art. Yeah, uh, definitely. You have to invest yeah. because it's a uh, art in general. Is nothing that can be done in, in in a minute or an hour or a day or a week. It takes much longer time, and yeah. that's that was such a great feeling when I understood on a deeper level that I will never be finished with my music. I will. It will never be perfect, but yeah. because you're young, you think you have to reach some kind of goal. To become something, but it's it. When you understand, it's not about that. It, it's, it's about the process. The, it's about the process and the path. Yeah. And when you, you can tell your students, I can tell my students. Yeah. It doesn't mean shit. They have to understand it. So that that's a big difference. I mean, that it's really. You have to realize. It. Yeah. yeah. There's no yeah. way around. It. I remember also when I was younger, like you, you know, I, I thought then you make a CD and or an album or whatever. Then it's like ah. Oh, you know, and then you realize, well, okay, let's you put it on the shelf. <laughs> and, and, you know, but now that I realized, okay, after a long time, like, okay, shit, I have to enjoy the process. I have to enjoy the writing, the recording, the hanging out, the talking, the, you know, all, all, all that comes with it. That's, that's important because once it's done, it's, it's there. That's. No, it's, it's really the process. I mean, it, I made a lot of records, maybe too many yeah, records, sure. <laughs> but uh, it's all about the process. I mean, and when the re I mean, I have a routine, like when a, a record is done and I get it to my house, I, ch I check it, you know, I check the test pressings and stuff if it's an LP, but yeah. uh, I check the music, put it in a shelf, then bye-bye, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you have to move on. I mean, it was an interesting process now when we did this fire orchestra project with local musicians, uh, because me and Johan, Andreas, got a baby so he had to postpone his uh, engagement in the pro in the project but we we've been preparing the three of us uh, material to work with because it's going to be half italian musicians and mm -hmm. half from our pool that's the whole idea and we had to listen through listen back to all the materials and this is sometimes a bit painful you know and weird uh, because I, I i done it i put it on i I did yep. it. I did it. Because it's done. But I have to say, listening back to Fire Orchestra was actually fucking pleasure. It was. It was. It was cool. It was great. And we made. We picked some stuff, some materials, and we made new versions of it together with new people. 
and then it, it makes complete sense. And anyway, yeah. I think this the idea. I mean, it came up pretty quick, and then we developed the idea. And I think now this is really what we like to do now because it's it's so many there's so many win wins. Yeah, I mean, everyone talks about the climate, but no one is doing anything. That's the feeling I have. But uh, you you think about a group of fifteen to twenty musicians traveling. And it doesn't matter if it's a flight or a train or mm. a bus or whatever. It, it's all CO2 demanding, you know, and all this bullshit with the flight industry. We should not even start to talk about because I, I, I get very angry when I think about think about this. Now I'm starting again, of course. Uh, it's not about flying or not. People who think that should study and find out the real figures mm -hmm. i mean uh, the ma the main uh, transportation problem we have is boats the big boats coming with commercial goods from china and yeah. taiwan and vietnam and blah 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 and and the kind of co2 emission that makes on the climate is you can't even compare it with the flight the global flight industry i mean i'm not bought by the flight industry but i studied this shit and that's the only education i have i i went to university two years when i was 18 or 19 or something, and study the uh, Umweltwissenschaft, uh, mm -hmm. the environment yeah. science stuff. And I'm really interested in it, and I try to read as much as I can, not just on the internet. Um, and it's it's a bit upsetting that always when, you know, like a newspaper going to illustrate the climate problem. You have yeah. an and and it, of course, it's a problem with airplanes. We should avoid flying. We should also avoid going with car. We should avoid a lot of stuff, but we don't, we don't do it. But we have to put the, the full, it's a political thing. I yeah. mean, all this fucking coal, new coal power plants starting up every day, basically. Australia, China, blah, blah, yeah. blah. That's the problem. I mean, if, if you fly to Scandinavia or you fly, I mean, for work, it's not the problem. Of course, it's a bit upsetting to see people flying to Thailand instead of flying to southern Spain if you're if you live yeah. in, in Europe. That's a bit stupid to me. This is of course bad. But that's what I mean. You have to be critical again. Yeah. I mean it's, yeah, yeah. it's all sure. you to read, study, and it takes time, but you have to fucking learn. You can't just same thing with the whole vaccination thing, you know. You have to try to see what it what, what is this really about? You know, not just go with the flow or like go online in this some weird conspiracy, yeah. or, you know, forums and people thinks, I mean, I have a good friend who is very intelligent, great guy. I know him since 30 years, blah, blah, blah. He knows that Bill Gates is behind this. And that's like, what do you mean? No, I know. I, I read it. We can't even discuss it because he knows. He knows the truth. Bill Gates created a microchip that is now planted in the, all the vaccines. So oh, also the Chinese. Okay. okay. It's to control us. And it's like, what? This guy is an intelligent guy. That's man. heavy. Yeah, that's heavy. <laughs> Love the Gates. What, what, should, what should you say? It's, it's, it's ridiculous, man. So, I mean, but okay, whatever floats your boat. But like, you need to try to find out. What it what it really is, you know. Yeah. It's a bit difficult to find out these days because you can't just click one time and think you oh, you reach you know. So it, it all comes back to be critical. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but we said, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Mats, I want to ask you this. You, you mentioned Paul Lovens before, and uh you know, I, I know the first records you actually did, like released were with Paul. Yeah, and one of the first. Yeah. One of the first, and the trio with Barry Guy. I love that multi thing trees and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. like a classic almost now. Uh, I mean, it's thirty years ago. Will be. It's funny. It's funny when you. And you, when people talk about those records and say they're classic, and it's like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> it's like I, I, I don't, I don't feel like I've been doing this music for. 30 years but, but I, I, I look on the discogs list and i i say yeah it, it's like 30 years <laughs> oh shit it's, but it's, it's bizarre right it's like i, I, I talked with so many guys like you know with, from new york or wherever europe 
Like it's like thinking in 1985, 30 years ago was Elvis Presley. So, and for me, still exactly. yeah. the 90s yeah. still feel like yesterday. Kind of, you know, I'm like, well, that's not old shit. It's like 30 I mean, years, you know. It's like, that's a lot. Right. It's weird because I mean, I feel I just got started in a way, you know, and I, I. I still have a feeling I, there's so much shit to explore. There's so much to do. I mean, I get from this fire orchestra week we did mm -hmm. now in it, I got a lot of ideas. Holy shit. I, mm -hmm. It was so much stuff going on with Italian musicians. Uh, there was uh, this great guitar player, Sara Ardocini, something. Uh, she played amazing slide guitar. Mm -hmm in a way I never heard before, I think it was fucking amazing. And there was this uh, mind blowing girl playing the, the Launeda's Sardinian instruments. Mm -hmm. Zoe Pia, what, she did some stuff I never heard before in my life oh. on those instruments. And that's also on a political level, also really hardcore because she's obviously a woman and she's playing an instrument only is supposed to be played by men in a very traditional culture mm. it gets a lot of shit hate storms because of this mm. so you also have to put certain things in the, in the context, yeah. society context and political context but what, what she what she's doing musically was like <laughs> it was great she, we had a moment in the, in, the, in the big piece we did where she had a solo for five minutes just on her own and the whole orchestra was like <laughs> Everyone was like on stage. It was really, it was a fantastic moment. So I mean, you just you just have to listen for it, and you you find stuff all the time to yeah. that can help me in my music and my life to to move on in in certain directions. Uh, but you have to grab them. You yeah. can't just sure. you can't just ignore them. You can't just. I mean, I know I have colleagues when they're on tour in different countries. The only thing they're interested in is to find a McDonald's and buy a takeout, go up to the hotel room and watch TV. I mean, it's true. Yeah, there's, sure. not so many, there's not so many of them now, I hope, but there's, there's still, I mean, and people, people, it's okay, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, Jim O'Rourke always say. But I think there's much more to it. There's much more to life, to music. Than, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, but like you said, yeah, I mean, but now what I wanted to ask you, like, how did you, when you look back now on those early records you did, I think you started then on a journey, and in these 30 years, like you said, you did like 200 or more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, if you look, how did the story with Paul and with uh, Barry Guy happen, actually? I mean, uh, Paul, <sighs> how was it? We invited him to come up to Sweden uh, and he already had some connections with the Swedish piano player Arne Forsén, a great piano player, who also does a lot of folk music, mm -hmm. amazing Scandinavian stuff. Uh, and we invited him to play a concert in the record shop that I talked about before. Oh, wow, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, because we had a series called Improvised Fridays, so every Friday one Farm Friday uh, a month, we had a, a concert with only Im invited people, like 25 people, and the, the store was mm. packed. And it got very popular, and, but we, we, we couldn't make it bigger because the <laughs> shop was small. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it's one of the best situations for creative music I ever experienced because, I mean, you're really close to the audience, you hang yeah. out, you talk, in a very relaxed way, you know, and uh, I like, I mean, I, I like to talk with people. I mean, some people have intelligent things to say that you can learn from, and that some people are just stupid, but that's okay too, you know, but it's it's all about sharing, you know, yeah. and, and talking, and, you know, it, that's a big part of why we do this. It's a, it's a social event. So if we invited Paul, I never played with him before, and we, we, we played this concept, and I think half a year later, we brought him up again. So there's, I think the record is actually from two different sessions. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but that, for me, the, the meeting with Paul was extremely important. But that was like the first international musician I, I played with. Ah, Sanoki Johansson, I also played with before. But one of the first and for sure the most important one. 
because it really also the way he is and the way he yeah. talks about the philosophy around the music and and, and life uh, was something I never heard before. Uh, so pretty fast I hooked up with him again and we played concerts in in Europe and I was actually that was when the public service in Sweden worked in a nice way because I I was young and I'm unexperienced and still I got this commission from the Swedish radio to put together a, a recording a concert you know that mm -hmm. uh, the radio was recording at the radio broadcasting house really great studio and we could put this mouth eating trees and related activities together uh, and then of course yeah I met Barry and that also just took off uh, and, it, and it's interesting because around this time when we started with Gash uh, my my first trio with Stian Sandell and Raymond Street uh, I, I applied for the conservatory the music conservatory I thought this was a good way to oh, understand well, okay. the I, I applied and I, I got in as a reserve, I think, yeah. Uh, but I wanted to, I, I said, hold on, uh, I have I have some tours. So I, I like to do this for, maybe I, I wait a year and then I come back and I do it. You know? But starting the touring activity with Gash and then connecting with Paul and Barry, Günther Christmann, mm, yeah. there was no reason to go into uh, the school. And now I'm very happy. If you're lucky, you have a good professor, a good teacher that gives you freedom, that yep. makes you understand it's all about you and not only to copy when when Tom Marsalis or when Short whoever, or, yeah, yeah, sure. or, Horton or whoever, uh, and you have you have a you have a good teacher uh, that allow you to do research, but we know that many conservatories and this academic world is the opposite yep. Com the complete opposite and then it's a it's a big fucking danger and uh, people get stuck or people stop playing or and it's it's also a huge problem with the uh, the whole gender situation because there's mm -hmm. a lot of that that state before the higher education starts you have in, in Scandinavia, I know, I mean, for the, the, the it's like a school, preparation school for the acad ac academy. Mm -hmm. And you have basically half, half, half women, half men. But when the academy, where the higher education starts, suddenly a lot of women are lost in the process. And then, of course, we have a problem because then the, the inequality is still there. Yeah. And the yeah. is still there. And it's only people with beard like you. <laughs> stop doing the educations you know and and it's it's getting much better in scandinavia the whole balance but it's uh, it's a i mean the whole academic world is is a big problem there's it's a, a different great, story there. yeah. it's a great this, and especially now when you have all this in scandinavia at least you have this uh, people doing their masters and they can they can choose the the subject more mm -hmm. or less and they can so they can get fundings to study a certain whatever technique or instrument or something for some years, and then you make a uh, yeah, you make your masters and you make your papers and all uh, stuff, and that can really lead to something good. It yeah. can, but again, it, it's up to the, the the professors, the people you have above you, and that's not not always the <laughs> the right people in the right positions. Yeah, so, I mean, for me. I, I was very happy I was not part of the academic world ever, you know, uh, yeah. and to explore the music and the art and everything in real life by doing it yeah. is a much deeper learning experience, of course. It might take longer time, but that's good, the way yeah. I see it. It should yeah. take it should take. I mean, you're not a fully trained musician if you study for four years in the in the academy. You're still, you're still on zero when yeah. it comes to music. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. But I mean, for me, it was the perfect timing because I met those guys uh, late '80s. And, you, uh, this is the time I, I've read you also played. With Derek Bailey, I mean, like around '88 or something. How, how yeah. did that happen? Or yeah, the Derek thing was exactly at that point '88. Yeah, maybe even '88. 
Mm. So yeah, that was a very early exposure. We played two short duos because there was a trumpet oh, player. Man. There was a trumpet player that got sick. So the the people who was in charge of the programming said, "Ah, why why not throw the young guy in?" You know, and I, that was in my hometown. So I got a chance to play with with Derek. with Derek. Oh wow! Very <laughs> very early. I was uh, twenty three or something. Twenty two. Oh wow, man! And uh, it was mind blowing, of course. But and then he invited me and Shell Lurison, my mm -hmm. dear friend and drummer, uh, to play in Company Week in London in 1990 mm -hmm. because of what we did with him in, in Sweden. So that, that's how it works. I mean, if you, you meet someone, you play, and what you play is interesting in one way or the other for the other person, you might get invited. You can't mm -hmm. expect it. To, you can never expect it to happen yeah. because this music is do-it-yourself from day one. Yeah. And you have to understand you have to do stuff for other people, not expecting to be paid back because it's never about that. Yeah. Some, at some points, people invite you. It's okay if you do good stuff, but you can't take it for granted. So that's why everyone have to understand that you need to create situations for the music to, to exist by... Yeah. Producing concerts, producing records, making radios, make, or whatever. Just make it happen. And if yeah. you do good stuff, you you will succeed. It might take a long time, but that's okay too. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can never push it. And all these things are so obvious now when you look back at, back at it. But when you're 21 or 22, you don't understand shit. You don't really know sure. where to go and how it works and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, I am just extremely happy that I grew up in, in Umeå, my hometown, and there was a really strong punk rock scene. Oh, all, really? Oh, wow. All do it yourself. And I played in some groups, <laughs> electric piano, and oh. some flute, which is the worst instrument you can choose in such situations. Uh, but I learned so much, and there was like, there was so much small like uh, gigs small festivals events outdoor indoor blah blah happening with in this circuit it's, it was not a big scene but it was big enough to yeah. have 10 groups whatever that were really active and doing stuff together and me and my friends who got attracted to the sound of, of jazz we we just adopted and and tried to do music of all the elements we heard basically yeah. I mean, when I heard Machine Gun for the first time, it, it feels like my DNA changed. But yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it was very much like, man, this is punk rock, but it's just this yeah. different instrument. Exactly. And better. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, and I wanted to go and to understand why, you know. Like, it's always been about the energy for me. I mean, the and do it yourself. And uh, I'm so happy I grew up with that because that. I hopefully can keep on doing that and and create situations for other musicians to to make recordings. I mean now I'm in a position uh, as a whatever name uh, established name that I, I can propose to a label that hey yeah. you you have to record Anna Hergberg saxophone solo record. She mm -hmm. never did a saxophone solo record. She's amazing. She okay cool let's do it. Yeah. And it's my responsibility to to make those things happen. Good things has to happen. Yep. And, and we can just avoid the musicians that are not doing personal music or creative music. I don't want to push sure. that, you know. But it's a community. So when you do a festival, you you invite all kinds of you know, things. Yeah. You don't yeah. invite in bad music, but you know what I mean? It's like you, you have to... Yeah, sure. That. And, and also invite people that you feel in their way can also create things happening for other people. So yeah. it's, it's, a chain, it's a chain reaction in a way. Yeah. And, and, and people have to understand those mechanisms early. So it's really important to, to talk about. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, what's not to take 
more of your time, I just wanted to ask this opportunity since you mentioned uh, Machine Gun. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, I know you played with Peter so much, like with the Tentat, and, you know, you played, like you said, in each other's yeah. projects and did stuff together. How is How was it like for you for the first time? You remember when you guys <laughs> shared the stage together? I mean, I have to ask you that because, you know, you're like and now in the same boat. But I mean, he's still, of course, older and uh, one uh, of the pioneers, still... but, but still, like, how was it the first time? I, w I was shitting my pants. I mean, I was terrified. I just, it's, um, and th that's also, I mean, of course, that happens with, with people you, you look up to, especially in Peter's case, with yeah. that kind of expressive music and and also the rumor he has around him, you know, yeah. being quite harsh and like <laughs> yelling at people and blah, blah, blah. And it's true, he does that too. He still does that. But he's one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever fucking met. You know, it's like the guy is, a, he's a unique kind of personality, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I mean, I learned so much from him, playing with him, watching him, hanging out, talking, and his knowledge in, in like, whatever, literature or film or, it's endless when, you know, when you start to scratch the, the surface and I mean, it, but I, yeah. I was terrified the first couple of times, you know. But he, he was cool. He really, yeah, take it, yeah, take your time, and you know. So he, he was very supportive, I have to say, on, yeah. on all levels. But it's it's always a, a bit special when you meet. Uh, when I met Lovitz yeah. or Derek, or you know, you have your he heroes or uh, yeah. heroes, you can say, because that's what it was, you know. Sure. And then you end up playing with them, and it's like, wow, how did this happen? You know, it's 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 still. For me a bit unreal but i mean it's it's about the process it's about yeah. learning and i'm still learning <laughs> you know then yeah. i mean of course it, it's uh we all get older and uh, with law in law paul Owen's case i mean he can't really play any longer mm. because he has problems with his uh with his hands mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. and i i can talk about it now because he, he made it officially publicly uh, knowledge basically but uh, this is something you know we get older and we, we there's a there start to be physical limitations sure. I mean I, yeah. hope I have I hope I have some more years in me <laughs> oh, God, I'm sure. but, you know of course when you, when you start approaching 80 or even more yeah, you know, yeah sure it's uh, I mean Joe McPhee is 82 that's yeah, incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. He's one of the youngest minds I ever, ever met. Yeah. And he's still kicking. He had some serious health issues a couple of years ago. and he But he came back stronger than ever. Yeah, and he's now, like, all over the place. You know. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have to deal with it now. We have to deal with the instant now and, and do things and not wait for that yeah. to happen. And, and this is kicks back to the do-it-yourself thing. You, you need to take initiative all the time and make things happen. You can't just sit home and wait for an email to jump in your box. Definitely. Earlier you said to wait for your phone to ring, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, I mean, you, we, have to, we have to create situations for, for the music and for other people. That's the, yeah. that's the, the, it's the only way. Right. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's a nice ending stand, statement. I mean, Great. I, I, I think we'll do parts two and three soon. So yeah, so no, you're happy to. It's yeah, a pleasure. So many it's things. I, I, have to, I have to go and cook for my, my girls I, now. So I have, have to cook as well. So we... <laughs> Great summer. Cool, Mats. Yes. Uh, I hope to see yeah. you around soon. So And we have a beer together or something. So Or play or whatever. Hopefully. One, one or two. Very one good. Two. Cool. <laughs> Ciao, Take care, Thank you. You Come too. <laughs> Doctor Jazz. Doctor Jazz.